back with Brian Cuban, author of the book Shattered Image. And I've got to say something because you're so transparent now and you're so open, which has got to be a huge release for you. And other, you don't have to stuff things in anymore. It is. No one will ever have anything on me. There will be no secret pictures. <laughs> you know, you know, I, everything is out there. So you have no hidden fears. I have no hidden fears at all. Everything is out there. Was anybody on your team in your go growing up years, did you have a mentor, anybody that said, there's something going on here? Uh, from, that, from that specific standpoint, no, because I never told anyone. But your behavior, your behavior would indicate that something was up, wouldn't well, it? Well, I mean, behavior, and again, this was back in the you know, early 70s. It was a different time. That's right. Uh, oh, he's just 16. Yeah, and I was just, uh, you know, I was an, an emotional child and could be, you know, I, through some temper tantrums. But no one knew about the shame and the, yeah. and the bullying and, you know, the issues with my mom because I kept it all to myself. How is your relationship with your mom now? Wonderful. My mom has been very instrumental in my recovery because she was willing to address her role and how she got where she was and then how I got where I am. That's a lot of families brave. don't have that. Did pretty you brave. all go through any psychotherapy together or no, anything? No, we have not. You mm -hmm. haven't? No, really? I've been through tons of psychotherapy. But, but she hasn't. I mean, she's been through her own. But oh, no, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She's done. She, you know, her recovery is her recovery. That's right. You know, my recovery is my recovery. And so, you said that she went through similar things that you were growing. Going absolutely. Through. She was she was verbally abused and fat shamed by her mom. And oh, we are not a unique gosh. family. That's not unique. It runs downhill, you know, in these yeah. things. You know, you know, verbal abuse often runs from generation to generation. So, Brian, your struggle with body dysmorphic disorder, which is what your book Shattered Image is about, um, you you kind of chronicle, <clears throat> excuse me, you chronicle this this journey of you know um, eating disorders and then um, alcohol abuse, drug addiction, um, self harming yourself. Yeah. I mean, you kind of ran the gamut of a lot of things. And at any point, didn't anyone say, "Hey, you that's a cry for help, and I'm here to help you." Well, you become very good. Anyone who's had an eating disorder, even addicts can tell you, you become, it becomes an art to live a separate life, to camouflage behaviors, and conceal everything. Yeah. So even my, I mean, for the first couple of years, even my shrink didn't know. I mean, I was going in, I was going in high. You know, I was going in on coked up, going in drunk. And you don't know. They're not clairvoyant. People aren't clairvoyant. I mean, you say the same thing. You, you see the conversation all the time when someone tragically kills themselves. Why didn't I say anything? Right. Why didn't people know? You know, life, you know, life goes on and life happens and you don't necessarily mm -hmm. see that as a sign of this. Right. How did you get to the other side of it? What, what was that moment like when you went, wow, I, My aha moment. Mm -hmm. And I, it's such a cliche, but everyone has to have an aha, aha moment to move into recovery. I was standing in the parking lot of Green Oak Psychiatric Facility for the second time where I'd been taken after a, a two-day blackout, alcohol blackout and drug blackout. And I'm standing in that parking lot and my girlfriend's crying. We, we haven't been dating about a year and it was terrible. I, during that blackout, I'd been unfaithful and we'd been dating about a year and she's crying and I'm standing there thinking, okay, she's going to leave me. I know that. And, you know, and, I, and I'm thinking, you know, I could, I could end my life, which I had come close to almost a year earlier. I can, you know, just keep moving forward in some manner. And the thing that terrified me the most standing there was not even the thought of ending my life. It was the thought that I was going to lose the love of my family. Okay. Yeah. Because family may love you unconditionally, but there are limits on their willingness to see you destroy your life if you're not going to help yourself. Yeah, that's true. And so, and they never said that, okay? But my father was the middle of three children. He had been raised, you know, to be close with his brothers. And when we were growing up, every week he would stress, brothers, 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 never abandon each other, always be there. And he would joke, girlfriends may come and go, wives may come and go, you hope they don't. Right. But when push comes to shove and it hits the fan, all you have is each other. Blood is thicker than water, isn't that's that right. what they and say? That's right, and that stuck with us. You know, we. We all were born in Pittsburgh, and yet we all live here within a mile of each other. That's mm -hmm. not really an accident. That's kind of the karma of what my father taught us. That's such a good thing. Are you though. at peace now more? Uh, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Have you I'm, found love? Absolutely. I've been with the same girl for eight years. That's great. Oh, that is so great. Brian, thank you for coming in and talking about this wonderful book. And I know a lot of people are going to be helped by your story. Thank you where for can we? Me. Where can they get the book? It's available uh, off my website and at Barnes & Noble. You can get autographed copies off my website or just buy it at Amazon.com. 
barnesandnoble.com. Also, uh, it's a competing station, but I'm going to be on Katie Couric today. Oh, that's great. At, uh, oh, three, I'm going to be on the Katie Couric show today on ABC at 3 p.m. That's oh, fantastic, that's great. Yeah. Brian. Oh, so good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, Oh, this next. is some, you know, this is hard to transition here, but we've got this great super kitchen <laughs> going on back in the Sub-Zero Wolf Bentwood kitchen for another delicious recipe from Sub-Zero's own executive chef. So stick around. And Brian, thank you. We love what you've done on today. Thank you very much.